Tika Chilewa Patel Samaj Community UK. I welcome you all uh, for today's webinar on sem uh, census. We have got Hiten Bhai Patel, who is officially appointed by the Office of the National Statistic. And before I give you further data on Hiten Bhai, I'm very proud to in uh, introduce to you uh, two young additional member of our Samaj as a part of the secretarial team. And they are none other than Anita Ben Mukesh by Halai. Anita Ben, can you say hello to everybody, Anita Ben? Hi, everyone. Thank you very much, Alji Bai. And then we also got another Anita Ben, but she's Anita Ben Vinod by Kerai. Anita Ben Vinod? Hi, everyone. OK. So these are two ladies who has joined a, a part of our secretarial team. And we welcome them as far as the members of the GAMS are concerned. And please uh, familiarize their faces so that sometimes when you come across on the roads, meet and greet. So today's function will be uh, headed by Hiten Bhai Patel. He is officially appointed by the Office of the National Statistic, which is called AONS, as the community advisor for the Indian community, especially for the forthcoming census which is due on 21st of March, 2021. Hidden Bai was also involved in UK civil service and he has served for 22 years and his last position was a UK diplomat at the British High Commission in New Delhi, representing the UK government in South Asia, Asia, Pacific, as a first secretary from 2008 to 2013. Obviously with his position, he has got a wide experience with several ministers in the UK. And he has also done a lot of seva in India as serving India, it is at his heart. And most importantly, he's part of the SKLPC. Why? Because he has taken some of our soil from our ground while playing, while playing cricket. So that is a little bit of introduction of uh, Hiten Bai. And before I give this webinar to Hiten Bai, Hiten Bai, uh, just to let you know, we have got a chairman of Hindu Forum of Britain, Trupti Ben Patel. Okay. We have also got, maybe Ramesh Bai is going to join. Ramesh Bai Patni he is also the vice president of Hindu Forum. Apart from that, we have most of our UK Swaminarayan Temple, and to name them is the Kachasam Swaminarayan Temple, Kenton, Stanmore, Woolwich, East London, Wilsdon, Cardiff, Oldham, Kingsbury, and Bolton. We have got either the president and or their secretary or the committee members. And apart from that, as I told you earlier, Without our GAM representative presence as presidents and the committee member, there is no SKLPC. So we have got most of our Chovis GAM. Now Pratinidhi Pan Atarya meeting in the Shay. So on behalf of all of these Hiten Bai, all yours, start rolling the ball. Thank you very much. Bhai Dota Beno, Hiten Bai Atare Apne explain Kase, Census Barama. Questions, if anybody has got a question, please put it on chat. And then once Hiten Bai has finished his presentation, we will take your questions one by one. Thank you very much, Hiten Bai. Uh, thank you, firstly, Valji Bai, for, for giving me this opportunity to talk to your entire Samaj. Uh, and this is a privilege for me to have this kind of opportunity. So uh, I'm really, really grateful uh, that uh, I've got this chance to uh, speak, not speak, but to you know be part of your team now and uh, see how we can work on this very important subject matter. So I really appreciate that. And Jai Swami Narayan to everyone. You can see the screen now? Yep. Yes. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, so yes, as uh, Veljibai said, uh, that you know I'm going to give you an overview on census, which is happening on 21st of March. Uh, and uh, you know I, I am one of the community advisors uh, ONS has appointed, uh, working for Indian community, uh, and the reason. Uh, for appointing us is clear because from previous census which happened in 2011, uh, there was a poor response from uh, certain communities uh, across England and Wales and Indian community was one of them. Uh, so the appointment of us as advisors uh, role is to reach out to as many Indian diaspora in England and Wales and inform them about the importance of the census and uh, how uh, we as ONS can help you getting this census done. Uh, and that's, that's my role and my remit. And I'm looking forward to all of your support in achieving this very important national task uh, uh, in England and Wales. So be before I start, uh, I, I want to uh, ask and request you to do me one favor, please. Uh, so my favor, uh, from you is that can you all imagine that you are all going on a holiday right now you are on an aircraft uh, and you know the, the tickets have been provided is a fully paid all inclusive holiday you are going to a destination of your choice and you are all on the aircraft and ready to enjoy your holiday while you are on your aircraft uh, you know the the refreshments are being served you get your meals being served and you're all having a, a good time. And because you're all so special, uh, I'm also allowing your family members to come with you. And more importantly, uh, all your uh, flight tickets have been upgraded to first class. So I hope you are enjoying your flight now. Uh, so, right, this is a 10 hour flight to a destination of your choice. They've reached the destination, had a fantastic flight. And then a team is waiting there Say for example, ONS, they're asking you questions about how was your flight and you know experience. So I'm sure some of you will say, wow, it was fantastic. Uh, you know, they, they got all they ordered for, had a first class meal, you know, uh, the drinks was good, the lunch was good, uh, and you enjoyed the entire experience because you had informed the airlines about your needs. Some of you were not ab aware about the, you know, uh, letting the airlines know about what is required uh, and what are your wishes. So you didn't get the choice of your meal and you are not really happy. And some of you uh, just didn't bother because you just felt that, you know, whatever you get is a freebie and we're going to enjoy uh, the holidays. So census is similar to that. It's a free for all. If you let the government know about your wishes and your needs, then there is free services available catered according to your needs. So please, please remember that census is not there uh, to you know, get you out, but it's there to help you. So are you ready for the flight? So what I'm gonna talk about today is, you know, what is census and you know, why we need it. I'm gonna talk about what are the essential information of the census 2021, because there are some differences from the previous censuses. I'm gonna talk about what support is available uh, through ONS to help people participate. And most importantly, I wanna talk about how you can help make this uh, census a success and the Indian community can benefit out of this. So the census you might be aware happens every 10 years. Uh, and it, it, it's required uh, a legal requirement that everybody takes part. Uh, census, as I said, and uh, well, you may also explain, is responsibility is the Office for National Statistics, which is an independent body. So it, the, the government doesn't intervene or interfere with, with its works. It works independently. Uh, and it gives a snapshot of the society. And because it happens every 10 years, the data uh, needs to be refreshed so that, you know, that data can be used correctly. So why we have census? So basically what I feel that census is about the stock take. It's a stock take of population against their needs. So the government needs to know that, you know, 
today's population is X, the population keeps on increasing and the needs differ of different communities and that needs needs to be catered. So the census data allows the government to shape the policy they are making, allows the allocation of the resources, where the funding should be going, you know, and what needs should be met. They allow them to plan services, you know, according to our needs. And it also allows us to monitor the equality. You know, there are some deprivation areas, some are not uh, that good. So, you know, it allows to monitor all this and have policies accordingly. So there are some headlines, you know, we, we can look at. So when it comes to planning and development, for example, then it allows us to develop the local plans to identify the needs and, and identify inequalities I had mentioned earlier on. Public health and social care also very important. It, you know, it tells us where the health deprivations are and what future care planning was required to meet the needs of the elderly population and also provide a good public health service to the population. Housing, again, important, again, establishes the needs of the new demands of the population. Importantly, education, absolutely, you know, we can then decide, you know, where the population is increasing, what kind of population is there. And, you know, if there are any specific needs of the community, then they can cater for that kind of schools, nurseries, even teachers, how much, how many teachers will be required for, you know, doing their jobs. Transport, again, everybody uses transport and it's very important to plan the correct transport so people can use it effectively. Things like libraries and waste collections, also the data can help on improving and making those services effective. You give some examples, you know, even charities and voluntary organizations use the data because the funding applications they make, you know, they can use this data and they can, you know, ask for uh, the funding to meet the needs of the local community. As an example here, uh, Nishim Aptel, she's a health worker, she used the data to, for diagnostic pur purposes for dementia in Asian and black people. You know, uh, Muslim Council of Britain used the data to supply Muslim chaplains in hospital. Uh, Jewish policy research, for example, they use the data to create, uh, you know, more awareness and cater the needs of future care for the Jewish elderly people. Church of England provides funding from, you know, looking at the data and BBC for, you know, looks at how they can have diversity agenda on staffing, et cetera, and what presenters are required. And you will see here straight away that, you know, we are lacking in some way. You know, our, our Nishima Patel was only able to use this data for diagnostic purposes. There is no funding available. And, and this is where we need to be more clever in terms of using those data to get fundings for our projects and help our community. I just wanted to give an example that, you know, uh, this is something which census helps us do if we provide our data correctly. Remember that flight ticket, free ticket, this is it. So one thing people worry about that, oh, my data will be leaked. The immigration department will be after me. Uh, the benefits office will be after me. That is not happening. You know, by law, your data is kept secret for 100 years. As soon as your form is completed, uh, your personal data, like your name, your birth date, your address, everything is hidden away and not a single agency in the UK uh, can get hold of the data until after 100 years. So please, please, please um, do not worry about that, that your data will be misused. No, your data will not be misused. You will be just a number and you know, your numbers will then be counted in the information you provide. So as far as the census, uh, which is coming, uh, this is happening on 21st of March, uh, as well you mentioned. Uh, so that is the date when the government wants to have a snapshot of the society. Uh, I'll talk about you know, how, how uh, you can go and fill in your form, but that's the key date, 21st of March, they want to know exactly what has happened in England and Wales on 21st of March. This time round is the first time it's gonna be a digital uh, census. So majority, 90% of uh, population will be expected to fill the census online. Obviously not everybody has access to online and not people feel comfortable about it. 
So there is a provision for paper questionnaire too. So please don't worry about it. We want to reach out to as many people as possible. Hence, there are thousands of uh, employers, employees working on this specific project on a temporary basis for ONS. So we want to reach out to everyone and everybody needs to be counted. And there'll be a lot of support available in getting your census done. So I'll talk about this uh, timeline. Uh, from next month, you will start seeing lots of advertisements in national TV, print media, social media, and so on. So from now on, you know, census will, will be publicized and people will start knowing about census. They'll be hearing about census. There'll be billboards. There'll be advertisements going on. Later in February, every household will start getting a uh, post uh, with census information, like that census is coming and letting them know that, you know, this is uh, going to be coming very soon. Uh, between 3rd and 12th of March, that is when the actual invitation uh, comes to your household through post. That in invitation pack uh, will have a 16 character unique code for you to access a safe website. Uh, and that's where you can access your own individual census form. Once you receive that pack, once you receive that code, you are free to start filling your census. Although the census is on 21st of March, once you receive your census code, you can start filling it in. And if there are any changes on 21st of March, uh, even, if, even if you have submitted your census before 21st March, you can do so. But if there are any changes, for example, on 21st of March, then you can ring the census line and let them know that, right, I have already submitted my form. However, there was a change, change of circumstances on 21st March, and this is my change, and you can notify that. So uh, that is very easy. So as soon as you start, get the, your form, uh, please start doing your census. And I'll also let you know that, you know, you can complete your census in various stages. You don't have to do it in one go. I'll talk about that in a little later on. And if, for example, if you have not completed your census, then you will start getting reminders in post uh, saying that you have not completed. You will start seeing field officers coming to your doorsteps and encouraging you to uh, complete your censuses. And we do not want to reach the stage where there is a 1,000 pound fine if you don't complete census because census is a mandatory requirement for everyone to complete. So what are the things we are uh, we will be seeing in, in post and so on. So you'll start seeing, you know, postcards, leaflets, posters saying that census is coming and letting you know that, you know, where you can get more help if you need to uh, while you're waiting for your pack. Uh, once you receive an invitation pack, you will see on the left hand side, that is something what a letter will look like. And in the middle, you will see there is a 16 character uh, code that is your unique code please do not share that code with anyone. Yeah, it is like your PIN number. So, you know, please do not share it unless you want a family member to help you and you trust your family members. Unless you want to speak to a census support center, then, you know, you can, you can release those uh, uh, information or a friend is helping you who, who can trust you. Obviously, we have the corona and COVID situation ongoing. So we have to make sure that, you know, we adhere to the government requirements on uh, this restrictions too. And I'll talk about that a little later on that as well. And one thing, please, please, please make sure we will not ask any money from anyone to complete your census. So if somebody is asking you for money or disclosing your financial details to complete the census, that is fake. We will not do that. No ONS member will ask for any payment. So please let your family members know about it. So the, in terms of communication, there are various languages we are using, posters and, and, and leaflets and so on. We'll start seeing you know, advertisement on billboards and so on, again, in various languages. Uh, so as I said, you know, those will all start from next month. You will start seeing these uh, imageries and so on very soon. Uh, there is also social media we're going to be using. Uh, so, you know, there is digital assets available on the census websites. 
I have already uh, sent some information to Veljibai uh, electronically. So, you know, you can use it on your website. You can ask, uh, you know, uh, youngsters to tweet this and say, look, I'm taking part. Uh, use it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, because that's where majority of the publicity will happen and people will start talking about it. So we do require you to help us in this uh, action too. So now talking about the actual form. So, you know, uh, this is just a sample. This is what the website is gonna look like. Uh, there'll be a provision to enter your code, 16 character. Once you enter the code, then it'll take you onto the online form. The online first as is easier and quicker. You can use any device, tablet, desktop, mobiles, and you can pause and return as many times as you want. Save your form where you completed to, and then you can uh, save it, and then you know come back whenever you're ready, and then you can submit your form. Uh, you can also correct any uh, mistakes you have made, and you know you can submit it once everything is done. Uh, there is also a provision that if, if most of the boxes are a tick boxes, but there will be some uh, areas where you will need to write. Uh, down some uh, information. So there are like, you know, type as you go uh, information and a drop down menu will come down and it'll make it easier for you to select the option. There are four main, main sections. The introduction and declaration, very obvious, you know, one person in your household who, who is the lead will sign that declaration. Their name will go on there. And it'll, uh, the information pack will also provide you all the other information, uh, you know, that, you know, if you need help, this is the number to call, what help is available. So there'll be a lot of, uh, there'll be a number of leaflets in your information pack also telling you uh, how to complete your form. Uh, then there is a question about household accommodation. So every household member has to uh, be accounted for, their details are required. It talks about what property you live in, ask about central heating, et cetera, again, to gauge what kind of society we live in and gives a snapshot of the society. Then it comes to individual questions. So every person in your household needs to complete that question. Uh, the online questionnaire, you can use as many members as possible. When it comes to the paper questionnaire, there's only room for five people and three visitors, you know? but you can request an additional continuation sheet by calling the number of the census helpline and they can send you the continuation sheet. Uh, uh, so yeah, individual questions, they ask you about various things there and visitors, obviously you need to, if there is any visitor, need to count them too because we all need, we need data for everybody uh, in England and Wales. So the question itself is very straightforward, easy, relatively easy to understand. And if you don't understand, for example, household, you know, it'll say list members of your household. And if you don't know what a household means or you need an explanation on that, there'll be a, a link in there and you can just tick that uh, link and it'll give you a def definition of household. It'll give you explanation. What do you need to do? So that is all there on screen. On paper questionnaire, you will have to kind of look from one page to another and so on. In this online questionnaire, it takes you directly to the most relevant question and you don't have to choose where you have to go. So once you take some, some uh, data, it will assess by itself that right, such and such questions are not relevant now and it will skip you to the next relevant question. So that is very easy there. As I said, again, you can go back and forth as many times as you want. And there are some, and there are two types of questions you will uh, selection box, uh, uh, selection boxes. So one is a square box, which allows you to take one or more selected answers if required. So please keep that in mind that square box gives, you can take as many boxes as required as relevant, but wherever you see a circle, it only allows you to take one box. The support which is in place uh, in the in this uh, invitation pack, you will have number for the public contact center. So that is gonna be the key telephone number. You can ring that number and they can guide you and help you with various inquiries you have. Uh, if COVID allows us to open the census support centers, there are, there are gonna be hundreds of centers across England and Wales. 
people can physically go there. There'll be online facility available and there'll be people ready to help you with that. And as I said, COVID permitting. Uh, there'll be telephone capture facility. There'll be web chats uh, help as well. Language lines is there. So if you want to talk in your own language, then there'll be translation system and you can talk and you know complete your census or get help uh, that way. Uh, if you have a uh, reading uh, problem, you know, and you need large print uh, documents, then that is available. Sign language, Braille, easy read left leaflets. So whatever you know, we we can give to cover the variety of audience. We have planned to give services to them so that everybody is counted. Why do we need to take as an Indian community? Why? I think you know you might already know that we are the single largest ethnic group. Uh, in England and Wales after the white ethnic group. You know, we last census, we had 1.4 million Indian in England and Wales. We, we are the cornerstone of British society. We represent UK in every walk of life. You know, we play a role model. We have integrated so successfully in British uh, society that, you know, people value the Indian values. And we are, in terms of education and professional work and so on, you know, we, we go to the highest education uh, and our kids are, are really doing very good. So if we are doing all this very well, then obviously our voice has to be counted. Our voice does matter and we have to be correctly represented just by doing our work and being good in our businesses and so on. Yes, that is good. But if we are not correctly represented and we do not show that strength, then you know, we are losing out in various ways. The, I want to highlight a number of questions which need some explanation in our view. Most of them are self-explanatory. However, there are these three questions which need some consideration and I'm just gonna quickly go through them. The three questions are in national, national identity, ethnicity and religion. So this is how the question will look on national identity. Uh, and these are the options available. One thing uh, uh, people do confuse is about the citizenship and ethnic group. No, please, this is different. And there will be information on the question explaining, as it says on the bottom, that you know this can be different from citizenship and ethnic group. What does it mean? It is asking for people where do you feel your home is? So for example, uh, yeah, obviously Britain, you know, we will say British is our home, but you know, some oh, will also have affiliation to other countries. For example, Indian people will have an affiliation to India. So how do we reflect that? So to do that, what you can, oops, sorry. Uh, to do that, uh, what you have to do is you have to uh, tick the British box Remember I said square boxes. So these are square boxes. You can take more than one if you need. So when you take the British box, it'll also allow you to take the other box. When you do other box, then it's gonna ask you, as you can see on the right-hand side, to enter your own answer because you've selected the other box. And this is where you can type Indian, for example. And you, know, you can select the Indian identity here. Uh, the reason I, I want to, clarify about this is because the last census had some ambiguity about it and people were not sure what to do. But this time around, um, I, through, through our medium, we want to explain to our Indian community that you know this is the route you have to take. Otherwise, what will happen is the last census, this was the data recorded. Uh, as you will see in red, uh, only 324,000 uh, or so said that they had affiliation with India and they ticked the Indian box. Uh, at the bottom left, uh, there were 800,000 who said they were British Indian. 168,000 said they are English Indian. And 44,000 said that they are English British Indian. Because they ticked all those number of boxes, the whole Indian national identity has been broken down into four chunks. So when it comes to being recognized, 
uh, as a force or a voice, we don't seem to have that voice. Just imagine if we had add all those number together, that would be some 1.3 million plus. So please be careful that when you do the national identity question, just do British, for example, and then Indian. Because you know, if we go down English, English, British, and all that, then our data gets distributed and diluted. Next question is ethnicity. Again, very straightforward question. These are the boxes available there to take. This is a round box, uh, not a round box, but a round uh, option. So it will only allow you to take one. So for Asians, you will take Asian and then it'll take you to the next box. And then they're breaking down the Asian category into various categories. And then obviously Indian community uh, chooses Indian. Again, I wanted to go to uh, about the data here. Uh, if you see 2011, uh, we as Indians were classed under the BAME, Black Asian Minority Ethnic. So 14% of the population in 2011 were classed as BAME. And that to me is not that identification we are seeking. That is how it reflects when it looks at BAME. So we had 1.4 million uh, Indians and still we are classed as Asian and we are classed as black Asian minority ethnic. So this is where you know the ethnicity and the national identity plays a very important role that if we give them the larger, bigger picture, that will have a larger, uh, strong voice for our community, which we are kind of not realizing. Religion, again, very straightforward, around selection, one option available, but this is a voluntary question. So please, please, please uh, do not get, you know, fooled by this voluntary remark on that question. I think, again, we need to reflect and we need to show the, that we are proud with our religion. So please, you know, especially the youngsters, I will urge them to take the religion box uh, as appropriate, you know, uh, and, you know, be proud to say that, yeah, we represent a religion and we believe in that. So please, this is important that and it's a voluntary question, but don't get fooled by it. We need as many uh, selections as possible in this. Just an example here, going back to the data, uh, the figures in red are 2001 census data and the blue is 2011 census data. Uh, as you will see, the Christianity uh, uh, was 71% in 2001 and that has gone down to less than 60%. If you look at Hindu, for example, that was not, not much difference. It was 1.1% 1 .1 uh, in 2001 uh, and you know, 1.5% in 2011. It could be because you know it's a voluntary question. We people didn't take it. We need to take that box. If you look at other religion, for example, Muslim, then you know, there were three percent in 2001 and 4.8 percent, uh, a significant increase. So again, we need to make sure that you know we are correct, counted correctly, and represented correctly. So as you see the breakdown of 2011 in religion, uh, you know, we were the second uh, highest uh, after the Muslim religion. Uh, and, and, you know, possibly, you know, we could have been much more if we had chosen to select our religion boxes. So it does matter. We do have to have a say, and it is important we do so and encourage everyone to do the same. So this is where I need your help. You, you have to, I mean, we are only 10 community advisors working for the entire England and Wales, but you as the community are there in great numbers. You know your community very well. You have a reach to your community. They can listen to you. They will understand what you're saying. So please help us, you know, distribute the leaflets and posters. You know, uh, they are all available on the census uh, website. I have sent some to Welji by already, and as and more leaflets and uh, imageries come through, I'll forward it to Welji by. And you know, Welji by, please forward it to your 
uh, other members so they can use it in your own way. Invite me to participate in WhatsApp group. Uh, we will. We have been given, you know, social media phones. I cannot invite uh, and create a group uh, because it doesn't. ONS doesn't allow us to do that. But you can easily invite me, and I can, you know, help uh, address any comments and so on. Uh, please use your websites, your social media platform to advertise this. Your endorsement will have a voice. Once you say something, people will start accepting it. It will be not a government telling them, but it'll be your own community member, your own community leaders telling them. So your help is absolutely vital. And please remind them that, you know, this is important. Yes, we do remind us from time to time, and there is no wrong in using those reminders because it's for the benefit of our community. And, you know, you can invite me for future community meetings and so on. You have a large, uh, membership. You have more than 30,000 members, I was been told by Veljibai. Let's reach out to them. If you need more presentation to your members this way, then I will be very happy to engage as many times as you want me to do so. And, you know, please, if you can, if COVID allows us, then all your temples, all your centers, you can help people do the completion because other community members are going to be doing the same if it allows them to do so. So people can come to your community centers and get that census form done because they trust your facility, they trust your people, and it will help them immensely to get this done. Obviously, COVID is in our way, but let's hope that you know it allows us to do so. So this is what the help I need from you because it is our census. It's about us, and it's about us getting the benefit of, of the census uh, by, uh, by our community, for our community. And there are more questions. If you have any questions about privacy and so on, then the census.gov.uk has all the information for you. We are available on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. So please, I would urge all the youngsters to take a lead, make a video of yourself, say that I'm part of census, say that I'm doing national identity, say that I'm a religion person, I'm doing it. And this way we'll get our voice recognized. And we need to get that done because it's in our interest, it benefits us all. These are my details. Uh, Veljiba has got it already, but if you want to make a note of it, and as I said, you know, please feel free to use me as your first point of contact. You can call me. I'll be very happy to, you know, answer any questions or concerns, and you know, point to you what is the best for us to do. The social media phone, as I said, I have a separate number, unfortunately. Please, if you want to invite me on WhatsApp chats and so on, then that's my number and email. So, you know, I'll be looking forward to, you know, any questions or queries from you and would want to work with you. And finally, just as I mentioned, there are 10 of us in England and Wales. I don't know whether you can see those details properly or not, but these are the numbers and names. Uh, and I'll be quite happy to send this detail to Welgibai uh, if somebody needs it. But uh, this is the presence we have uh, in England and Wales, and we are all uh, that much, all passionate about getting the census uh, for our Indian community. We want 100% from you, and I'm sure with your help and your support, we'll get that. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll take questions now. Okay, that was uh, very nice of you, Eden. By thank you very much. As far as the questions are concerned, I think there are not uh, very many. There is only one question here. Typically, how long would it take to complete the census for an individual in the event temples get involved with uh, inviting people to help them completing the data? Right. Uh, it, it, uh, we, we, we reckon it's about 10 minutes. Okay, so if you if you are doing if you're doing it in one go, you can easily do it in less than ten minutes uh, yeah. because they all tick boxes. You know, the only time it will take longer is when you are uh, required to type in your name and addresses and so on. Otherwise, it's uh, it's just ten minutes. Okay. The next question is as we, as the same question appeared in 2011, and I think you discussed this. Uh, is it important that under the religion we do not use the other 
type of Swaminarayan or Hare Krishna, but we use only Hindu, and that's right. Right. We should, we should identify ourselves as Hindu, and that's it. Because in 2011, as far as I know, some of us did write that okay, I am a Swaminarayan, I am a Hare Krishna, I am so and so. So you are good in what you are, but let's not confuse the office of the national statistic. Let us make it simple. Am I right, Ethan? Bhai? Absolutely. I mean, this is this is uh, your your choice. But you know, as I said, the more uh, breakdowns we have, we are diluting our strength. So yes, we we all are proud to be Swami Narayan or Vaishnav or you know whatever that religion is. But if we are just uh, a, a small number, then that strength is not going to be recognized. So if we do select Hindu, then you we will have a voice, and that voice will matter to us. There are you might have seen on social media that you know Jains, for example, they have done a massive campaign saying that you know they they want to take other and Jain. Uh, I mean that you know that's their choice. But you know we have a large number of Hindu uh, in, in our society. So you know I think if we if we stick to one larger uh, religion, uh, then that strength will be valuable. Okay, the other question, and I think it's the last one, which is very good. Uh, that shows that you have done a quite good presentation. Before I will uh, ask our Trupti Ben, the president of Hindu Forum, to say a few words. So the last question is the Gujarati community in particular, Kamlesh Bhai, is are both up to the self-financing. We never ask for loans or grant in temples. Are self-funding, whereas the Muslim community always obtain some sort of grant funding from for the building of mosque, which is yes. Could this could this be the reason why we are very low down in the census statistic? Yes, a, a very good question, and uh, I, I'm happy to share some information on this. Uh, basically, the, the way census data is used is all about who has said what and how many have been counted. And as I explained to you that we are classed under the BAME community, black, Asian, minority, ethnic. Yeah. So when it comes to, you know, uh, seeking funding for our mandirs and so on, uh, yeah, we, we rely so much on donations. And, and for example, there, I understand there are like 300 temples in, in England and Wales. And when we were speaking to some temple members, uh, we asked them, do you have a, a, a database of the members? Obviously, people, you know, come and go and there is no membership as such. But those are the data which are very, very important and vital. We can encourage our temples to start creating a database. So when it comes to seeking funding, we can say to the, 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 the uh, org, uh, authorities that, right, we have... 10,000 members who comes to our mandir on a daily basis or a monthly basis, etc. And we have this need. And for this spiritual need, we need a particular funding. And that's how the other communities are getting that funding. They have numbers, they have their data, and they have to produce that evidence. And that helps to get the funding. So yes, please uh, be careful that you know we need to create those kind of uh, databases to get our fundings uh, showing the evidence to to get the funding. Okay, I think I I don't have any other question than that. As you rightly said, after this meeting, I'm going to share the information which you have given me in form of template uh, to all the uh, members of the community and the temples as well. Now, can I request a uh, Trupti Ben Pravin Bhai, if you can unmute Trupti Ben, the president of Hindu Forum, to say a few words, Trupti Ben. Jai Swami Narayan, everyone. Namaste. Um, uh, I think I know many of you, and you do as well. Um, very important point. Uh, Hiten Bhai has raised uh, considerable numbers of issues. Let me just remind everyone, in 2011, if you all recall, we did Dharma Yatra. So those from the uh, Oldham, Walton, those in Leicester, you will all remember that we had the census sessions, and we also had the forms uh, like a template um, and helped everyone to complete the forms. And many of you actually helped in that. And thank you very much for that. As SKLB is a quite large organization and all member organizations really, really work hard. 
Now this time we have been working with the steering group, uh, part of the steering group with, this, with the census office. And the most important uh, question that you need to answer is we are British, we are Indian, okay? And then when it comes in the religion, we have to make sure that we are Hindu because last year, well, in 2017, when we had a meeting with the census office, there were 25 different categories and they were a bit confused. So we went through each and every one and we explained to them that this is the path this is the path to the, um, it's, it's all encompassing into the Hinduism. So please, if someone says that you are Vaishnav, someone says, I am from um, sort of like um, a Swami Narayan, uh, someone would say that I'm, I'm Arya Samajis. And people didn't understand at that time that why should you put Hindu? So even if you put that, you can put it in the, in, in, in the bottom one, if you want to say you are a Swami Narayan, but make sure that you tick the Hindu box. And another thing most important out of this census is that, um, yes, the question raised by um, someone just now about the funding and all that. Um, funding is all proportionate to our um, uh, population. And also we all need to be minded that we want to apply for the funding and why we want to apply for the funding. So it's extremely important that we use local data and for that, we need to make sure that we utilize this information. Now, this time round, I'm going to talk to Veljibai separately. We've started the process where Oldham is going to, or the Northwest is going to have their census meeting soon, probably in a in, in couple of weeks time. And we will produce, if it's needed, video and Gujarati leaflet as well. So rest assured the Hindu Forum of Britain is doing everything with the help of national executive members like Veljibai, uh, and Pravin Bayamin, who is our, um, uh, our representative in the steering group, and I sit on the steering group. So any question or anything you need to have um, with Hiten Bai or any other uh, other other members like uh, Rajendra Bai and uh, um, uh, Subhash Bai and others. So please come to us and we will help you. Elji Bai is always there to help everyone and we are here. So thank you very much everyone for attending the meeting and let's make it a big success. We have our home secretary, we have our business secretary, we have our chancellor and let's have some of you young ones there as well in a few years time. Namaste, Jai Just, Krishna. just, just, wanted, to, just wanted to say Drupti Ben, uh, that is absolutely brilliant that you, know, uh, you mentioned those names at the end. Uh, I mean, me now taking my ONS hat off being an Indian, mm. I want to add that this is the best time ever that yes. Indian diaspora will help and support our ministers because mm. the ministers were not having that support from our diaspora. And, and we have excellent ministers in the government, mm. in the right positions. And if we become their strength, by giving our numbers to them, Correct. Uh, because that number will allow them to push the certain agendas we want to push, yeah. not just here, but you know, back home also. Yeah. So you know that is that's why the national identity question absolutely. is absolutely a must, must yeah. and must. Yes, and, by, yes. and similarly, the religion question again must. Just want to make a small correction. Mm. What you mentioned, Tupti Ben. Uh, do not go down writing anything because that's, it's a round box. If you do it, uh, firstly, online form will not allow you to do it. Yeah. But if you do it in the paper form, then your 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 uh, data will not be mm -hmm. counted. It will be eliminated. But Hindu is necessary, you know. So that's Hindu why is necessary, yeah. yeah. Uh, otherwise, you know, you'll, it'll be diluted and, See, you know, if you... Uh, write Hiten something it will be uh, misused yeah but hidden by this is the way to tell people because yeah. if you tell them then they look at the round round box and they look at yeah. the square and, oh but you know i can't write this anymore but i yeah. was told i can so this is the way to yeah. use use that method of no, telling fantastic. people that you must do that and absolutely yeah. you all are doing wonderful job and i think i did yeah. mention that let's have a separate meeting as well together and work yeah. it out area wise because we get requests from many other areas and yeah. um, as as klp has got all their 
the member organizations are part of the Hindu Forum member organizations. And we want everybody to work together. We want everybody to help. So those household who have not got people to help, yes, definitely will help. And I think the job, job um, advertises just come out, which we yeah. circulated for the um for, for the court. Yeah, yeah, yeah field yeah, officers. That's right. So that's right. yeah, absolutely Hiten Bhai, that was really, really good. Namaste everyone. Thank you yeah, very namaste. much, Felji Bhai. And I'll just I'll just leave you. Namaste Jesse Krishna and Jay Swami Narayan Badane. Jesse Krishna. Thank you. So, Hitan Bhai, it's Ganji Bhai here. Uh, yeah. So, we have a question on chat that um, is an important one to answer. And, mm -hmm. and that is Is there any funding available from ONS to help uh, community organizations mm -hmm. like SKLPC or our GAMS or our temples uh, to promote this within our community? So, basically, um, if you have a database, let's say it's um, uh, 200 people or 4,000 people, clearly the leaflets will be provided, whether they're in electronic form or print printed form by ONS as part of the government campaign, but clearly that can be complemented by um, a direct mail shot from an organization. However, there is cost uh, to that organization, which they may not be able to bear. So cut long story short, is there funding available uh, for community organizations to be able to send mail shots based on the database they hold? Yeah, unfortunately, there isn't because, you know, uh, it's just not Indian community doing this. Yep. Every community in UK is doing it, and you know okay. uh, it won't be appropriate or possible, in fact, yep. to to you know uh, provide funding. The government is spending millions of pounds on publicity, but you're yep. right. You know, grassroots level, you know, we need to engage, yep. and unfortunately, that there is no funding for reaching out through mail shots and things. What we are encouraging is through if if there are you know newsletters going out electronically. Uh, websites and so on. That's what we are, we are encouraging. But unfortunately, the answer is no. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think, Ethan, thank you very much. And again, on behalf of uh, SKLPC, I would like to thank all of you for being with us today. If it is necessary, I am happy to have another meeting and that will be wider than what we had today. The reason I had a meeting today with the GAM presidents and the GAM officials and the temple presidents and the temples committee members was to brief them first so that at least they are aware. Maybe somewhere in uh, February end, as we approach March, we will have the meeting with our membership database as we, as we had with the COVID, whereby about 700 people joined. And all this information will be shared with all the guns and it will be also on our website. So until and unless anybody has got questions, I think I would like to thank from the bottom of my heart to all the members present, firstly from the managing committee, which is MC of the Kachira Patel Samaj community, the GAM representative, which includes the president, secretaries, and the committee members, and Obviously, the, the members of the temples as well. There is a, as I said earlier, we have got the president of Kingsbury Temple again, Mahesh Bhai, as I ranked you today, on behalf of SKLPC and on behalf of the Hindu Forum of Britain, we are so proud of the Kingsbury Mandir for having the vaccination center. And just for, for everybody's information, be very careful, and I'm saying be very careful with these WhatsApp messages. That is why sometimes people send me the message, okay, is this a correct message? And that was also done by Trupti back today, which is fine. And whenever I get these messages, I also seek authenticity from the source. And once it is confirmed, then I will say, yes, okay, it is a true message. So for everybody's information, the vaccination at Kingsbury Temple currently is being dealt with people age 65 plus. Any, anybody below that, you got to hold on. One thing. At Stanmore Mandir, it's a testing center. So if anybody wants to go there, please follow the procedure. Now, again, this is just a clarity. And ever since this COVID started, ladies and gents, some of the members of our community have been wondering, Okay, what has SKLPC done 
as far as this COVID is concerned, bearing in mind that we've got a big center. So let me assure you that since March 2020, I did contact NHS, I did contact local MPs, I did contact local councillors, not once, but on a number of occasions, telling them and requesting them that look, ladies and gents, because they're obviously ladies and they and MPs as well, that if they want to use our center for this COVID, we are open. So that's one thing. Come January 2021, we had a meeting with NHS from Ealing Council. Four officials came. We spent about two hours. We showed them all the facility available at our center. They were happy. But they said that because of the local infrastructure to do with transport, currently they cannot use the center because it's to do with uh, elderly uh, people. And there's only one bus route which goes there maybe an hour or after two hours. And, and the, the underground station is quite far. However, they have assured us that when they come to 60 and below or whatever, they will approach us. And they are happy to use our center. So, so this is where we are. Apart from that, SKLPC has also donated approximately 18 to 19,000 pounds to NHS by buying the ventilators and some of the essentials to the Northwick Park hospitals. We have also given some money for the food to the deserving children through Avanti School. So it's not that we have not done that. So please bear in mind that SKLPC has done to the best of their ability. We have also helped those of our community members and other Hindu organizations and the community members as well. When they wanted to go to India for emergency, like seriousness in somebody's sickness, somebody's death, with the help of British High Commission, with the help of Indian High Commission, we have tried to help them. Vice versa, when the COVID started in March, April, and when so many of our parents were in India, enjoying the hot sun, holiday, and then the pressure came that Talo Bhago Bada Pasha, London Ma. So it was a panic. So at that time, SKLPC myself has engaged not only with the Home Office in London, but I has also engaged with the British High Commission in Ahmedabad and the British High Commission in New Delhi and a group in Mirjapur. And they did a tremendous hard work. And I can see Laljibai Gorosia, he also benefited through that group and he managed to come to London and so many others. I put a list, so I think about four to 500 people, we helped them by getting the flight. The arrangement was such that they were picked up from the villages in Kutch and they were taken to Ahmedabad. So when we don't publicize this, ladies and gents, that doesn't mean the SKLPC is sleeping. We are doing our best. We also have got two other burning questions we are discussing. community generally community and there are so many people dying and they are not getting a chance of the burial sooner as it was the previous one. So I've spoken to some of the funeral directors and there are so many procedures as well behind that. We are working with the team and we'll put a small information on our website okay, why it is taking long. So this is where we are. Thank you very much, Hiten Bhai. Thank you everybody, especially from the temple and all the gums. Whenever we call you next time, please pass on the message and let us make this census much, much better than it was in 2011. We are here to help. As Hiten Bhai said, I will share his number. You can contact him directly. You can contact us through Import SKLPC or secretaries at SKLPC. You can write to presidents at SKLPC. The doors are wide open. So yeah. with that in mind, and on, on behalf of everybody, ladies and gents, we had 56 members present with only one drop and one addition. So 
thank you for your most valuable time. I can see some smiles from Kishore Bhai and and rest of the members. This shows that yes, you have enjoyed Manji Bhai. Someone can come and say Manji Bhai from Bolton. Gujarati people can say what is the show? Mandir na. All the way from Bolton, he has also joined. Manji Bhai, can, Manji Bhai, if we can just thank a few of the other mandirs. Nilesh Bhai Pindore from Bulich Temple is here. East London Temple the representation of Vishesh. Wilson Temple the Ravi K. And Vinash Pindolia from SKSST. Thank you for joining this evening. Okay, James, Hitan Bhai, thank you very much again, and we'll keep in, keep in touch with you. And once thank again, you. thank you. And don't forget to take vaccination. Vaccination ni andar kasu kai na thi, ya? Badu tamhe jota so is a pure vegetarian, is halal. It has got no meat, no fish, no nothing. Thank you. Just, just, just wanted to add on that, Velji Bhai. Uh, Kingsbury Temple ma jay tamaru center khuliu. Uh, I saw a local newspaper article. I have talked about it. And in the under, Nichol Lakhush said that you know BAME are not taking the vaccination. Yeah, but in BAME, in the under, apart from that, people are getting it. So, it is not a good thing. It is that our identity is made. And we are not Indian. We are not BAME. We are Indian and proud to be Indian. Uh, so, you know, uh, that's just a message I wanted to highlight again. Absolutely, I agree, Hitan Bhai. And again, I will emphasize on this. As a Hindu, let's organize and let's be recognized. And I just took the benefit of our parliament in the Panapra, Pratini Dioche. I did the America Majoso. So, America Mapa Ketla Bada, Abra Hindu, Bio Beno, Cabinet in the Ravigashe. New Zealand in the Pan, New Zealand, the Prime Minister, she is also very uh, a hearted Hindu. We also got two ministers in New Zealand who are very Hindu pro. So we are, we are coming, but apne bata jagrut thasu. So I'm sure we will achieve it. Bale apne muthi jatla sahi, but we can do amazing work, ladies yeah. and gents. So again, ab thau ne khub khub abar. Thank you very much. Thank you. And enjoy your day. And once we meet again, you'll have the communication. Thank you. Jai Swami Narayan. Jai Swami Narayan. Thank you, Ethan Bhai. Thank you.